up, man? How's it going? Good, man. How you doing? Uh, living the dream, man. Living the dream. We had a good time last night. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's Rick, it's Ricky's birthday weekend for all the people that don't know out there. <laughs> so I think he's doing like a whole big, long weekend celebration. So thanks for making the time, Ricky. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and clear that up, though. I'm not doing a big, long celebration. I would be perfectly fine slugging around all day doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> My wife is is great at making me feel loved and appreciated. So she has coordinated mm -hmm. things. For oh, me that's so sweet. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Ricky's wife, for letting him have the time to come to this. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Um, so I also got a really nice care package from some guy named Alex in New York. Um, <laughs> he sent me a handful of these things right here, Roaring Riot Lagers. <laughs> so I appreciate that. So I'm going to have a beer with my co-host today. While oh, we there, you go, there you go. I got my I got my bush. Love it. As usual. Uh, but um, yeah, honestly, I needed you here today because I didn't watch the game. Also, I got my DJ Chirp jersey. Oh, yeah. Hell yeah, dude. That looks great. <laughs> I had to wear it. Um, uh, so uh, me and my wife, my wife's pregnant. So we usually just like we'd go to bars together with all of our friends and get to have like a good time all together. And now she's, uh, she's pregnant, so she can't really drink. It's not really have yeah. a time for her anymore. So we're trying to do like date night once a week. And Friday is always a really good time because we don't yeah. have to worry about work the next day and all that good stuff. So we went and did putt putt last night or mini golf. Um, nice. Who won? She crushed me. <laughs> yeah. To be fair, she was completely sober and I was drunk. So what was it? That she's was an drunk. athlete in the family, though. She you really know? is. Yeah. <laughs> if you see her, she's, I mean, she's pregnant and still has guns. So, right. um, so, uh, so I missed the entire game. All I did was catch up on Twitter. So I am going to need you to basically just do this whole podcast oh, for me. Let's uh, go. So, <laughs> but I get to be here, you know? So that's right. It's, it's like I'm, if I, it's like I'm helping. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I thought we would just, you know, just dive right in yeah. and um, kind of just start from. So, you know, I get the the main the police reports, get the ESPN, get um, you know the the local reporters all on notifications. So, like, my phone's blowing up. My wife's like, "Turn your phone off." And yeah. it's like, "Hey, the game's on." Um, so, of course, I get everywhere. Bryce's first touchdown pass. Bryce making these people look like like idiots on the field. Yeah. Like like turning people around, putting people on skates, like all this kind of stuff. So because they gave me such like little tiny pieces of the game, would you mind giving the audience and me your perspective of Bryce and his impact on the game? It would be my pleasure, honestly, because, <laughs> man, I'm just going to tell you, dude, like I'm riding a high from what I saw from Bryce Young last night. I, I've been saying that I have no issues with what we've seen in the preseason from him, right? Like I have been saying that I've, seen the decision making i've seen all of the things that he was touted for when he came out of college last night they opened it up ever so slightly right they still didn't like show all the goods but they gave us a sneak peek of what the offense could look like with bryce young at the command and i'm giddy man like <laughs> I, I really don't know the better way to describe it like this dude's anticipation his ball placement and his decision making are elite from a rookie quarterback standpoint and he looks like a veteran quarterback out there playing the decision making is so crucial because it's not just his throws last night we saw his ability to be elusive in the pocket and then scramble out of it for positive yardage on broken plays or plays where the pocket is collapsing on him that is such an underrated aspect of this guy's game he was able to get first downs he was able to make defenders miss and extend the time that he had to look downfield to make those correct reads and throws. He had some throws that he missed the mark on going deep, you know, like he, he overthrow or he throw it outside a little bit. But the thing about it is the ball placement on these misses, he's not being dangerous with it. When he misses, he is being intentional about where he's missing. It's such an underrated nuance, man. And that's not something that you see from rookie quarterbacks often. Now, the ball placement that he had to that Adam Thielen touchdown, let's get straight to that. That's elite ball placement. You see Adam Thielen turn around and catch that thing, and he literally got hit in the head with it because it was just right there on him. It got to his hands and almost went through to his face mask, and he had to reach over and hit that pylon for the touchdown. It was a thing of beauty, man, and I was so happy to see that last night. And Bryce, even on some of these underneath throws, though, that people are like, oh, he's just dinking and dunking. Look at when he makes the throw. It is when he lets the defenders move far enough back, even if it's a little six-yard separation between a linebacker and Adam Thielen out there on the, on the outs. He's letting that linebacker take a few more steps back 
just to create opportunities for Thielen after the catch. It's it's just this innate ability, man. And I haven't seen it from a rookie quarterback in quite some time. So I'm very, very, very excited about Bryce Young this year. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you did you see Camp Comp- Confidential? No, yeah. I haven't watched it yet, man. I'm I'm one of the worst fans ever when it comes to like watching hard knocks at Camp Confidential. <laughs> I, I try to find time to do all that stuff, man, but it's just impossible for me. I'm, I'm over hard knocks this year. It's 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 all all it is is just jerking off Aaron Rodgers, and I'm like, I'm, I'm good. Um, <laughs> yeah. But in it, uh, in the camp confidential, the, the I can't believe that if you have you haven't seen it, you that's literally what Hayden Hurst said. He said he would turn around, and the ball would be like right in his face mask. It's right there. Yeah. So that's wild that you hadn't seen that, and that you're literally saying that same thing. It's, anticipation man like I I think that that is his superpower we talk about the processing and and that's evident it shows on film but the anticipation of these throws that he is making before receivers are even out of their breaks it is incredible man and it is something that you typically will see a quarterback develop over years in the league getting used to the game speed and understanding playbooks and reading defenses and all that kind of stuff I just don't think that Bryce is going to have that big of an adjustment period in this, which means not, I'm not saying that we're going to have team success right away, but he is going to have individual success from a developmental standpoint instantly. The minute that he steps out there against the Falcons in week one, he's going to be the best NFC South quarterback. Yeah. um, I don't know if you saw Dan Orlovsky's tweet. He like breaks down the feeling pass. Yeah. And he, all he basically says the entire time is just, He's a rookie. He's a rookie. He's and a he rookie. does not look like it. He, it. Like he's just so enamored by it. This is a rookie doing this. And I know that like Chris Sims wife is really bothered <laughs> by the fact that he's a rookie and was taken first overall. But it, you know, maybe she should listen to an actual football analyst and hear me when I say he's going to be a okay. Thank you for your concern. <laughs> and Johnny muscles too. let him go ahead and take a break at the, at the, the bike or whatever he's doing at the gym. Everything is going to be okay. Everyone take a deep breath. Bryce Young is good as hell at playing quarterback. Oh, man. That's funny. So, that's so funny. Yeah, sorry. I, it's, that it's that so shit just that, got under my skin, man. Like, it's just such a stupid thing for Chris Sims to say, man. It's also like, like this is what your audience wants to hear. Like, this is this is, the, yeah. this is what you're choosing to talk about? Yeah. Your audience Up next shit? on the Alex Jones show, right? Like, <laughs> just go do something else, man. <laughs> Christ, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Look, I'm really happy. I'm in a really good mood today, but I just don't have a lot of patience for bonehead stuff yeah, either. That's you know? so funny. Uh, I don't know, man. I I just think we should have like a a segment, like like a bunch of tweets, like what, what grinds my saying? gears today. You know. <laughs> um, yeah. So let's go for Bryce. We just talked about the connection to Adam Thielen. Yeah. How did Thielen look? Is he spry? Does he look like healthy? All those yeah, all those good I, things. Yeah, man, I liked what I saw from Thielen. Thielen is getting open. He's in the right places. Um, Sure, maybe he's not the exact same Adam Thielen from like 2017 Minnesota Vikings, 2018 Minnesota Vikings, Mm. but he's really good still. And he has a nice rapport with Bryce Young. Bryce Young trusts him. You can tell that. Um, Receiver core in general, I just think that we're forgetting a little bit about who is on this roster. Mm. We saw last night all of this being done with Bryce. Without Miles Sanders, and I know he's a running back, but he's going to be involved. Without Miles Sanders, without Terrace Marshall Jr., and without LaVisca Chenault and DJ Chark. Those are legitimate (laughs) NFL – yeah, Chark. Those are legitimate NFL receivers and and running back, right? Mm. We just have to take a little bit of a patient approach here and wait to see what happens when TMJ is back out on that field. I think that he is such a big dynamic piece of this offense that when he's out there, if he can take a little bit of pressure off of – Let's say rookie Jonathan Mingo, who also, man, I'm ready to shout from the top of a mountain about this guy. This dude's ability to stay on the field for probably 90 to 95% of the offensive snaps in his rookie year due to his physicality in the blocking game and just his diverse ability on offense. This guy's going to be able to run deep routes. He's going to be able to run the short intermediate stuff. We're going to be able to scheme up just about anything we want to. So when people freak out and they're like, yeah, but Thielen played with Justin Jefferson. Justin Jefferson came into the league as a rookie. No one knew what he was going to be, right? So why are we so sold that there's no chance that Jonathan Mingo can't be dynamic right out the gates? Because from what I'm seeing, Bryce trusts him. And if Bryce trusts somebody at this point, that's the biggest cosign I need. Because I believe in Bryce and I believe in just about every single aspect of his game. 
Could Bryce get the ball out a little bit quicker? Yeah, I think that that's something that he could still work on and that could help the offensive line and stuff like that. But when he feels comfortable with a receiver, it's telling me that that receiver is an NFL ball player and that they have abilities that somebody that I trust very much to make the right decision already has that faith in that player. Yeah, yeah, we talked. Go ahead. No, go for it, man. Oh uh, yeah, we talked about this before, and you know I'm a huge uh, Chark believer. I I love DJ Chark. Yeah. If 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 there's somebody that emerges that is better than DJ Chark, yeah. I love it. I don't think that makes right. DJ Chark worse. No, I think it doesn't. It makes our team better. That's and exactly after, right. After I saw the Giants game, I said Mingo's wide receiver one. Like yeah. he's just different. He's just different. Yeah. Um, I love that you think that about Mingo. And I think that it's only going to get better. And you think about all those guys uh, last year, towards the end of the year, like like yeah. Drake London, Dodson, Olave, those right. guys that started coming on strong. I think that could be a lot like this year where yeah. we, he might not show a lot of And, and Mingo early. just has a different ability, too, than even those guys that you name, right? Mingo is such a physical guy. That His first reception yesterday, the quick slant that he caught, it was like a seven-yard slant. His ability to get upfield once he had that ball in his hands, he looks fast and explosive. But you also just get the feeling that when someone tries to make that tackle on him, they're doing so with a little bit of hesitancy because they know it's going to hurt them too. This is a freight train running at you, right? I mean, it's 225 pounds of muscle, just bound muscle coming at you with speed. And he doesn't shy away from contact. He's just a dynamic, complete receiver in my mind right now. Now, look, his route tree still has to get you know, tidied up a little bit and he's going to have to work on some of his, like his releases and stuff, but he's also working with Steve Smith at a lot of these practices. I know he's not an official part of this team, but we do have a great wide receivers coach at Jefferson as well, man. I just, I am and Adam Thielen to sit there and teach him this stuff. We got to remember this was built intentionally. These pieces were put together and we haven't seen it all out there deploying the actual offense with everybody healthy. And I'm still this, excited and like anticipating success from this team just off of this yeah man yeah, you, <laughs> it just yeah. feels good man i'm just really jacked up today <laughs> um yeah i think you the post the video of how he comes in and pushing back uh defensive ends yeah like he's like he's like hitting at the line of scrimmage and pushing yeah. these dudes back initiating contact with oh. the defenders getting after him and then he closes in on that block he collapses that defender which allows spencer brown on that play to get through for the first down. Yeah. He's going to stay on the field, man. As much as he can from a stamina part, he's going to be able to stay on that field as much as he wants, man. Yeah. This staff loves his usage. Yeah. Yeah. If you've got a guy, because receivers don't like to block in general, right? Just in, like, in general, receivers don't like to block. It even took guys like Larry Fitzgerald, like, taking that on to right like, he didn't want to do that either and he became right. an excellent block- blocker towards the end because he's a good dude and he and he's a physical player you know? a physical player. Yeah. yes exactly um but to do that as a rookie right away against yeah. grown men yeah whew, that's uh that's that's big so you so let's go to uh you talked about spencer brown right okay yeah. the whole i i saw a ton about how good spencer brown was so yep. i didn't see any clips of spencer brown doing anything except for the one you showed with bingo yeah. uh what did you see from him because i know a lot of people really liked what they saw yeah, I love it. Um, we know that he's like a physical back, and that's what his um, profile is for this offense too. But last night he had a couple of catches out of the backfield as well. So he showed some soft hands there. The thing about him, and, and this goes with the physical profile of him and the, and the physical running style, his legs keep going, dude. He doesn't stop moving his legs. And when he falls, he falls forward. And that might mm-hmm. sound stupid, but that, it's, it's a big thing because when it's third and one and he gets contact, instead of going, you know, to the side or going down, he has enough power and momentum behind him because of his legs turning that he falls forward. That's an invaluable asset for a power back. Mm -hmm. I like his prospects of making the 53. It does kind of get cloudy when you start looking at the logistics behind that, because then that takes away from another position group. If you keep four. And I don't, I don't think there's any realistic way that tube is getting cut. I don't, I Raheem Blackshear showed his versatility and his worth with the kick returns, his, catching out of the backfield, all of that stuff. And he's just been the they, they he's been him. very fast and shifty too. And that's something yeah. that we need on this offense as well. Yeah. So I just think that you're going to have to keep four if you want to keep Spencer Brown. And that does change things. But man, if you don't keep him, he's going to be on somebody else's 53. And I think he's going to get playing time wherever he ends up because this dude looks like an NFL football player. Yeah. And with Chuba, um, as much as I really like Chuba, and like I told you about this and how like, he is more of that like patient, hit the hole, explosive kind of runner. Mm-hmm. He doesn't, he doesn't necessarily um, 
initiate contact and yeah. like for short yardage type of, of situations. Yeah. And I think that's what I do like about Spencer Brown is that he understands like his that kind of role. It's like mm-hmm. I know how much yards I need to get. I will yeah. initiate contact. I will go through you and I'll I will go fall, get it. find ways yeah. to fall, fall forward. Yeah. I, I like the way you just said that because I think that's something that we've talked that people have in general been talking about. Right. And yeah, Chuba is big enough. He can do it. That's just not kind of back. He is. He's kind right. of more. I mean, it's a bad comp, but like the Le'Veon right. Bell kind of let me wait for the hole to develop and I'm going to explode through it. Kind of, yeah. Kind of. And, and, you know, he benefits too, because this offensive line and we, I know we kind of glossed over that, but so we'll just touch on it real fast. Yeah. This offensive line is built for power running. Like that's, that's a lot of these players. That's their forte, right? Bose, uh, Icky, even Taylor Moten, um, mm-hmm. Corbett, when he comes back is really good in that. So there's, there's a lot of, a lot of reason to believe that he would fit really well with the offense because of that dynamic. The offensive line, I thought, looked okay last night. Icky still had a couple of issues where the power to speed gave him a little bit of a fit. He had the one sack that he allowed. Um, but overall, I, I still just don't feel any panic there. Mm-hmm. I liked what I saw again from Chandler Savalo, the rookie. I think that he's made a good argument to go ahead and take that starting right guard spot at this point because he's been the only one that has started these games where it wasn't a glaring hole there where you said, man, we got to try somebody else next week. No, no, he looks like he can hold his own and do that. And if it's only for two or three weeks, four weeks, whatever, let's give him that experience until he shows a reason not to do it, right? So mm-hmm. I, I felt pretty good about the offensive line last night, just to touch on that really quick, too. Yep, yeah. I mean, honestly, like, you see what they're we're, – we're, all these guys are – seeking contact guys we just talked yeah. about it just these little bit of people that we've already talked about savala wants to hit people we know right. that jamie robinson likes hitting people we know that mingo likes hitting people even the guys right. they brought in von bell likes hitting people yeah Aaron Rowe, like these guys they're like they like to be physical and yeah. i think that's what we and we talk about flying around and being physical where we fast and physical it kind right. of like you remember um the the super bowl um falcons defense mm-hmm. they were they were like smaller though but yeah. they were fast and they hit and that's kind of, I think, what led by people, Deion Jones. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, but yeah, even the Deion Jones, exactly. Those are the kind of guys that yeah. we're bringing in, and you can see it. Even if they're they're like, oh well, he doesn't do this well. Well, he's fast and he hits people. Right. That's what we want to do. We be right. fast and we hit people. Yep. Hell yeah. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I think, man, I'm like really excited now. I wish I would have watched the game. Maybe I'll watch. Maybe yeah, I'll find fun, a replay. Man. Yeah, do a do a rewatch, man. It's yeah, worth yeah. it. it. It was a really fun game last night. I'll see what NFL Network's doing when they got him back on. Um, and I, uh, so I wrote down, I also wrote down Trimble, um, you, cause you, you, you spoke about him, you tweeted about him. Uh, yeah. what did you like and not like from him? So it, it was kind of like a mixed bag with Tommy Trimble. Um, I read the Joseph person article today, um, where he kind of highlighted a few players from last night and, and what their ramifications were on the 53 and all that stuff. And he said that Trimble is potentially open to be a surprise cut. It's a possibility. He didn't infer that that was going to happen, but he said that it was a possibility type of thing. And like, I get it. He had a drop last night that was a a bad drop from an Andy Dalton pass. Um, He whiffed on a tackle on special teams that allowed a really big return um, on a kickoff. He had those moments that didn't look great. Mm -hmm. But what I also saw from him is I saw some really good blocking in the run game. He's just a really physical guy, but he also offers the ability to go out there and run his routes and catch. He had that drop, but then he had a really nice catch from Andy Dalton a couple plays later. Mm -hmm. Um, He also had a play where Matt Corral missed him wide. It was just a little bit of an inaccurate pass, missed him right off his hand. He got one hand on it, but it was an extended full full arm extension. What not able even to remotely try to bring that in. But he made a really nice, he ran a really nice route to create that opportunity for Corral to throw the ball to him. I just think there's still a lot of potential there, and I wouldn't be ready to cut bait on that because of his blocking prowess the the other person is geo ricci right like th- those are the two players that are very similar in that mm. i think that if tremble is willing to do more on the special teams which we saw last night then i i think that you go forward with tremble because of his potential over ricci and that's a way too that if you're not having to carry four tight ends you could open up that spot for that fourth running back because i think right now we've all kind of been under the impression that it probably would be four tight ends to keep ricci If you can tie yourself and say that Tremble provides that same thing, but with more potential, cool. Let's cut bait there. Let's keep those three and let's open up that roster spot. So Tremble was a mixed bag, but I don't feel bad about him based off of last night either. I like the way that he bounced back and kept playing hard. 
that's another thing that I just look for from players, right? If you face adversity, if you're having a tough game or a tough moment in a game, don't put your head down. Let's let get back to work. You know what I mean? Get out there and prove why you're still a valuable asset to the team. And I thought that Trimble did that. So that's what mm -hmm. I look for, man. And, and it was encouraging for me to see that at least. Yeah, I mean, we just talked about like, I just talked about it. That they want guys that are physical. They want that contact. They want to hit people. And may, yeah. there might not be another person on the team that likes hitting people more than, than Tommy Trimble. So. Yeah, and it, it affords that, multi, you know, being multiple. It, it affords that opportunity for this offense, which we know that that's a big component for both Thomas Brown and Frank Reich is staying multiple. He provides that. So I, I think that you keep it there because we saw Ian mm -hmm. Thomas on a couple of routes last night get his hands on stuff and he couldn't reel it in. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like Tommy Trimble probably has a better opportunity to catch those passes than Ian Thomas. Ian mm -hmm. Thomas serves a purpose, but if we're talking about being multiple, that to me is Tommy Trimble more so. Yeah, I think it'd probably be a cap thing. Like I, to, uh, right. Ian Thomas would be dead cap if you cut him, so it doesn't really make a ton of sense. Whereas yeah. Trimble, I don't think it is. I think, I think you can cut him without losing any kind of money off of him. Right. Uh, but same with Ricci. You're right. I mean, those two would probably be the most sense as far as cut candidates. But yeah. I don't think I, Trimble ain't getting cut. I mean, in my opinion. I mean, I didn't, I didn't watch the game, so I don't know. But right. I, I'd be shocked if Trimble got cut. Yeah. Um, let me uh, – so is there anybody else on the offense that you saw that you probably need to touch on? Because those are no, the main I mean, I, I, I think that that was it. So my, my one thing that I will say, too, is because I hear a lot of conversations right now about Matt Corral making the 53. Are we going to keep three quarterbacks? I just don't know, man. I, I don't see it. I just don't see uh, even really like a high-quality NFL backup quarterback out of Matt Corral. Mm-hmm. I, I hate to say that, but it's. It, I know that he hasn't had a ton of experience. I know that he had the injury his rookie year that kind of derailed his opportunity to develop. But he looks panicked. It, it, it looks yeah. too fast for him. And I think, yeah, you got that new quarterback rule, so maybe there's reason to keep him. Mm -hmm. But it still counts on the 53 if you keep him. Yeah. So I'm just not entirely sold that he should take up that spot if we're talking about defensive players that have a position group that is very loaded, right? Yeah, yeah. There, there's just room, I think, on this roster that we need more depth in other areas. Right. I would be more comfortable taking Bryce and Andy Dalton into the regular season. And if you got to sign a third quarterback somewhere yeah. during the season, then do it. But for the sake of some of these young defensive players making the roster, yeah. I would really like to see them just go two quarterbacks. Yeah, I'm with you. I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think the likelihood of you needing Corral is very small. And if you're getting, get, if you think, if you're going to get Corral, and you're, I don't believe he's going to win us games. I don't think. Right. I'd rather have somebody that is that like a Josh Johnson or like you know somebody like that sure. that just understands the NFL a little bit more, understands the yeah. speed of the NFL. Yeah. And there's tons of those guys out there. I mean, yeah. Even bring back Will Greer. He just got cut from the Cowboys. Like guys like that, I'm okay with. Over. I, I don't want Will Greer, but no, but, <laughs> but saying, you like, can have him. <laughs> but he's been in the league long longer, and he's been in. He started NFL games. He he's been in practices longer. He. I'm, I'm talking about. I'm not going to go into it because I can go down a list of like all these <laughs> yeah. guys. So we're talking about third quarterback here, so I'm not right, going to keep right, doing right. that. that yeah, that's, um, that's the point. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I think we can find a Matt Corral yeah. if we needed him if Bryce went down. Yeah, but, but I think that's a, that's it really for me from offense, man. Like I saw what I wanted to see. Yeah. It it looks good, man. I'm excited about the offense. Yeah. Oh no, I I'm excited. I'm excited that you're excited. All right, let's go to uh, the the defense. So. Yeah. Uh, Carolina Blitz um, tweeted out, uh, she, they did an interview with um, Brian Burns. Mm -hmm. And Brian Bur <laughs> Burns is, I haven't tackled with somebody in a long time. Burns said he thinks that this uh, defense could shock the world. He's really yep. excited about this defense. Yep. So let's get into the defense because I like to hear that. So I think uh, going into this game, we're looking because we, we, we have uh, – Horn in and out of lineup. We mm -hmm. have um, Dante Jackson uh, already dealing with the ankle injury. So yeah. we need to make sure we have cornerback depth. It said that CJ Horn, um, CJ Henderson, Henderson. Yeah. Uh, Reich said he's Mr. Consistency. Right. Is that what you saw out of him? What did you see about Keith Taylor, just the cornerback position in general? Yeah. I, like, look, I, I think that CJ has had a nice uh, camp and preseason. I think that Frank is right. He does seem to be more consistent than what he showed last year. There's still just an issue with him that when he he does this great job of using his athletic abilities and staying with a receiver all throughout their route. And then the minute that it comes to tracking and finding that ball and making the play on the ball at the end of it, his brain seems to just do this thing, right? Where he's like, 
ah, should I do something quicker than what I was thinking? Where it's like almost second guessing itself, right? I think that he's going to have to get through that to really reach his potential. He had the pass interference call last night where it was kind of that similar play. He stayed with the receiver all throughout the route. The ball was in the air. Now the receiver made an adjustment. He slowed down on his route to come back to it a bit. And CJ hooked his arm around his waist. I didn't really see it turn the receiver all that much. I didn't think that it made a huge impression on the play. But it could be a point of emphasis for officials that when you see that hook of the arm, that's just something that they're going to look for. So you got to understand that and be aware of it before you make that play. But again, it was one of those things where he was in such good position. I don't think that he needed to do that. And I think that he could have made a play without doing that. I, I think that if he'd have known where the ball was, if he'd have turned his head maybe a second quicker and identified where that ball was, I think that he could have had a different outcome there. And that's the only part of his game that I still struggle with a little bit. Outside of that, I do really like what I've seen from him. Now, Keith Taylor Jr. is a guy that I like the way that he plays. Even on, even on passes where he allows a reception, he is in position to make that tackle almost immediately. Mm-hmm. He's right on people. He is staying with them. He's not getting burned. He's not getting lost. I like that from Keith Taylor Jr. Because we don't, we don't need him to be our quarterback, too. But if injuries occur and he is thrown into that second cornerback position, I'm not terrified of that, man. Mm-hmm. Like, he's got the physical ability to do this. He seems to be progressing from the understanding part of it. So I do feel good about that. And I like that this secondary coach, right, with Jonathan Cooley, the cornerback's coach, I love what D'Angelo Hall has brought to it. And I love that Ajiro Evero is a secondary guy as well. I just think that we've got all of the pieces in place to get the most out of these guys, and we've seen that through the preseason. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, only thing that scares me a little bit is bringing Hill in that you di- for some reason you didn't see what you needed to see. Well, so, your so Troy Hill, though, is a classic traditional nickel. Yeah. And in Evero's scheme, and I talked about this actually in my last article for Cat Crave about the defense and yeah. what we should expect, the traditional nickel is something that we didn't necessarily have on this team. Mm-hmm. Um, he had familiarity, obviously, with uh, Cooley and Evero from his time in Los Angeles. Um, but he also just offers that when he's playing a slot receiver, the shiftier kind, you mm-hmm. don't really want Jeremy Chin yeah. on that type of player. Jeremy Chin is your star. He's your big nickel, right? He's your third safety that comes in. But you're going to need a corner that can play that nickel. And I don't think that you move JC off that often to play nickel. I think we will see him in the nickel alignment. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you move him off of that boundary that often to the point where like you could just feel comfortable deploying him there. So Troy Hill provides that aspect. Now he could play inside and out. He he can protect that boundary as well. But I I envision them doing a little bit more of nickel usage and depth for injury concerns. Now he's also a veteran player because we've got a very young secondary. So adding yeah. that veteran presence also pays dividends in the locker room and teaching these young guys how to play the game. Yeah, especially somebody that that's been in the system before so yeah anyone has questions they absolutely say, hey what's like can you what are you seeing can you give me some yeah these it's guys are learning good. so much new you know verbiage and in, in, in terms as far as like calls and responsibilities that it's nice to be able to talk to a teammate even within the huddle or something that can give you a little bit of clarification if you're feeling a tiny bit overwhelmed you know yeah 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 no and so going going back about who we cut to get yeah. Hill in, it means that they kind of, I guess, feel pretty good about their defensive tackle situation. Yeah. Williams, like, who, like, did they stand out again? Or, like, how, how did they look? Yeah, so I did watch that pretty closely to see if there looked like there was some significant gap missing with Marquand McCall being cut. I didn't notice anything that, that was alarming. I, I saw Raquan Williams again performed well last night. I think that they do feel really comfortable with him. And I know that Mike K has been touting that for a while. And, and Mike is usually very spot on on all of these kinds of things. So did that's a really good thing. Processing Blue? That he, yeah, he I did listen to, to that. Yeah, yeah, he, to yeah that last he was one. really good with that. Yeah. Listen um, to Processing Blue with Mike K. Yep. <laughs> and Langston Wirtz. Um, so it was, it was encouraging for me to see that. Now, we are also without Taylor Stallworth last night from injury. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that means for his roster spot. I. I hate that for him if he was injured and he couldn't play because I do think that he's had a nice showing. I think that they felt comfortable with him. But if he's injured and you've got these other guys like the Raekwon Williams, you've got Deshaun Williams that played well, Shai Tuttle, Derek Brown, Henry Anderson's still going to figure in somewhere in there. It, it, it just gets a little bit tough to say, are you going to keep five or six interior defensive linemen when you also have to have 
Now, the good thing is that they all have versatility. They can play that end or the inside of the 3-4 if that's your base scheme. And in the nickel and stuff like that, they offer you know a, a good amount of versatility to deploy on those alignments as well. So I, I'm, I'm not sure what Stallworth's outlook is at this point. Mm-hmm. But if he does make it, it's, it's, it just kind of bolsters my opinion because I like what he brings too. So the defensive line does not look like a problem area for me. Yeah, I, I, I'm concerned about the run defense just because I do think that we're missing some just playing girth on that mm-hmm. defensive line. And, and a 3-4 base is typically difficult to, to defend the run at an extremely high level anyways, right? But I just think that that's, a, that's an area that we struggled in last year. It's an area that I still don't feel overly confident in this year. Yeah, I'm more I'm more confident in our linebackers for that. Uh, like in with uh, yeah. um, Shaq Thompson and Luvu, I think right. they see it fast and they get yes. there fast. So yeah. more of like instead of it kind of reminds me of the Falcons scene that made the Super Bowl. It's mm-hmm. that they, they get to the ball quick. They don't have to sure. be large. They just see it quick yeah. and they get there quick. Yep. Um, so that makes me more confident in the run. Uh, and I'm glad that somebody is stepping up. Yeah, I, I I think I talked to you about this is. It was almost like, do we just need to put Brown back there and say, I know you're better right here, but right. we just don't have anyone else to do it. So yeah. I'm glad that somebody's stepping up and, uh, and, and taking over that tackle role. Yep. Um, so moving on to the you know the rest of the defensive line, we'll kind of go to linebacker from there. Um, Leota, yeah. is, he, is he still making plays, still looking good? My guy. Yeah, yeah. Your guy, yeah, yeah. Guy. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, we got like three guys. I got like three guys too. Uh, yeah, my, my three guys are more obvious than your three guys. Come next Wednesday, I'm going to have 53 guys. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like I'm just going to, the whole team is going to be my guys. I'm just going to rally. Um, no, I liked what I saw from Iku again last night and he didn't get a ton of pressure necessarily after the quarterback, but he was, he was mixed in a little bit earlier in the game. And I know there were players that were out. Barno was out. Um, we know Brian Burns didn't play. We know Justin Houston didn't play, but but Iku did get some opportunities early in the game. First team, I believe he had some snaps with them, and he played a lot in the second quarter. What I like about Iku Leota is that he's not a one-trick pony. Mm. He can play against the run and set the edge. He has that ability, and he shows the mental whereabouts of knowing what his responsibilities are when that's his, respons- when that's his deployment, right? Mm. He knows what his task is, and he performs it. I think that he deserves to make this team. Mm-hmm. I think he showed enough again last night. I think he plays good enough on special teams that yep. he has shown a versatility that is very valuable to this defense. Where I struggle with this outside linebacker group, and I posed this question to Joe Person today on Twitter, and I asked, is this the most difficult position in the entire team to gauge what they're going to do at the cuts? Because it just seems like a loaded situation. There's nuance to all of it too, which makes it even more difficult. Why GM was not drafted by this coaching staff? I don't think there's like a loyalty to him, but he does offer the run blocking ability and he can line up on the defensive line in in like a speed package where he can actually play, you know, a three technique in a speed package and and kind of get after the quarterback. I just don't know that he's done enough to actually say that he's earned a roster spot this year with the rest of these young guys, these Ecoliotas, the Kobe Jones, the Amari Barno. That's the three headed like log jam in my mind right now. Amari Barno has shown enough this preseason, I think, to make the roster, but he didn't show much at all in camp. Now he's dealing with an injury. So does that kind of like change the direction of the thinking here by the front office and the coaching staff? DJ Johnson, I think, has shown that he can develop. He, he's a very physical player, and he's shown yeah. enough that, hey, look, man, yeah, I'm a 25-year-old rookie, but I kind of get it too. Like, And I, I kind of see why they were interested in him. I still oh, yeah. don't know that it was like the savviest of moves to trade up to get him. Right. But that's not that's not my responsibility to make that determination, right? Yeah. That's something that guys who are way smarter and way more experienced in the NFL, they decided to do that and I'm going to absolutely listen until they have been proven incorrect on that. Um but that that's just that log jam, man, because Kobe Jones also plays good and he plays hard. He hasn't shown a whole lot this preseason as far as production and stuff. So I could see them saying, hey, look, Kobe, we appreciate it, but we're going to go with Iku, we're going to go with DJ Johnson, and we're going to keep Yeter because he provides a little bit of a different skill set than everybody else. I don't know that it would be the right move, but I could understand the thinking behind it. 
that's probably the position group that I am most interested in seeing what they do. When Brian Burns and Justin Houston are out there and Marquise Haynes, I, they're going to get after the quarterback, man. Like Brian Burns is one of the most physically imposing players that I have seen in person. That, that dude is just so West big. Confidential. Really? Yeah, he's he's good. He's a good player. Yeah, right. he, he is, is right? Like, like he deserves to get guy? paid. <laughs> oh yeah, he's he's um, going to get paid. Yeah, he will. And, yeah. and that's the other person, though. I, I briefly just touched on Marquise Haynes. He didn't play last night, but he's healthy. He said that he's going to be a thousand percent ready to go for week one. That's another player that I'm still not down on. I think people are forgetting about him because he's, you know, recently hasn't been involved. But he's a good ball player, man. And when he starts playing rotationally with Justin Houston, I don't think you lose much when one of them comes off and the other one comes on. I think you're getting some serious speed out there coming after the quarterback. So. Yeah. I, I, I have a lot of questions, but they're not bad questions about mm-hmm. the outside linebacker oh, yeah. group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think our top three are great. And I think any, yeah. any one of them at the, our fourth, it's, 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 you feel fairly good about. Yeah. Uh, so it's more, but yeah, we're, 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 we're splitting hairs on depth of guys. Like, right. Rather than our top guys. Yeah. They're and really- all of that ties into what we talk about with the four tight ends, the four running backs, the three quarterbacks. These are all areas where if you say we can make a clear determination that one of those guys isn't as good as the other people, then maybe you cut them and you just say, we're going to save that roster spot and keep Iku, Amari, and Kobe Jones, or maybe just Iku and Amari, right? Maybe yeah. you just say those two. Uh, DJ Johnson's going to be on the roster. They, they, yeah, yeah. they use draft capital to move up to get him. He's going to be on the roster. We know Justin Houston, Brian Burns, and Marquise. So that's four people already. Yeah, I don't yeah. think you carry more than six. Yeah, I'm with you. And that's, you we'll know? get to that. We'll get to that. Um, right. Let's finish up defense real fast. Uh, uh, Brandon Smith, you tweeted about him. He, he, Man. That tweet you made. He, dude, he's just so physical. He's such a, a, yeah. a, 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 a good talent. Yeah. That he, uh, you tell you me talk about you a traits guy, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a traits guy. He's built like a shit brick house, right? Like mm-hmm. he's just giant, athletic, muscular. He's fast as hell. But there's just something that doesn't show up consistently. Yeah. I don't know if it's the processing. I don't know if it's the reaction time. I I honestly just can't call it. But what you do see when he flashes is you see the potential of a difference maker on defense. Now, he played a little bit more on special teams, and he looked good on special teams. Um, I Man, I can't call it. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like, very honestly, he is one of the harder evaluations I have on making the roster because you've got a guy like Chandler Wooten that has yeah. been consistently solid yeah. in these preseason games. And he's athletic. He's not as big as Brandon, so he doesn't offer maybe some of the versatility that Brandon can. But if Brandon's not putting it together consistently, are, are you sure that you want to let him take up a spot on the roster? And you know what I mean? And get rid of somebody that does. When we're talking about depth, we're not talking about Brandon Smith starting. So yeah, when yeah. you're talking about depth, you don't want to slide somebody in there for the opportunity where they have to, if somebody comes out with a stinger or something like that and misses two series, do you want to put a guy out there that you're not sure what you're going to get? Or do you mm-hmm. want to put a guy out there that maybe doesn't make as many dynamic game changing plays, but also won't make the dynamic game changing mistakes and mm-hmm. allow somebody to do something that, that Chandler Wooten wouldn't have. Right. So that's, that's the thought process that I would use for that. I don't know how the coaching staff in the front office will do it, but it makes sense to me that that could be a very difficult decision for them. We know Bumper Pool already got released, right? We saw that on the initial yeah. waves today. Um, so it, it, I think it is between Wooten and Brandon Smith because with Camus Grugier Hill coming in and Deion Jones addition, I, I, I just think it makes that room yeah. very, very slim to fit into at this yeah. point. Yeah, I don't think they keep six right there. I think I think it's one extra five guy. maximum. Yeah, yeah, five yeah. maximum. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So let's get into because I think that we might not have a podcast come out before Tuesday cuts. So let's right. just go ahead and like what we think. Uh, I, I, so let's go over who got cut. So Jake Luton, Cam Peoples, um, uh, Jennings, Saunders, Coleman, Jackson, Bumper Pool, uh, Duncan, Thomas, Rajon Wright, which was. A lot of people loved him. Yeah. And uh, uh, the kicker, right? I forgot his first name. Yeah. Um, yes, I, I'm not, I, I think Rajon Wright was like, he just, yeah, he just didn't do anything. People loved Rajon Wright in. had the most um, known name, right? Yeah. And, I, and I talked about this today, too, is that I think that there were loftier fan expectations yeah. than there was actual reality of that situation. Yeah. I, I liked what Rajon Wright brings physically. But he always had a problem allowing big plays. He always had a problem getting burned. He, he had a, 
his athleticism was almost a detriment to him sometimes because he would try to rely on that as opposed to doing technically sound things on the field. What we saw from him in the preseason and in camp was that he showed that too often. Mm-hmm. Yep. It, it, it reared its head. So it, it wasn't a surprise for me for him to get cut. I actually think it made a ton of sense. Yeah. I, I don't think there were any surprises out of that yeah. initial 11, right? The only player that I think has a chance to make somebody's 53 after being cut like that is Gary Jennings. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a, he's a speedster, man, and he's shown some pretty decent hands and some value. Now, the other thing that the Panthers did here by designating these guys to be waived or going ahead and waiving them and, and making that known to the rest of the league is they present an opportunity that before these guys hit the waiver wire officially, if there is a team that is low on the priority order for waivers, they can look at these guys and say, hey, look, I actually like Gary Jennings. I'll give you a conditional sixth or seventh rounder to Mm -hmm. just send him to me right now and not have him go to wires. So maybe that's also a strategy that's being deployed here with some of these people that are the names, right? The Ray John Wrights, the Gary Jennings, even the CJ Saunders to an extent. Maybe they're trying to bait somebody into giving them some sort of draft capital for it. Right. I don't know yeah. that it'll happen, but it is a move that the Panthers have done in the past. Yeah, makes sense. Um, yeah, I think Ray Jennings might be the only guy. And somebody, yeah. somebody will turn him into a star. Like and Bumper Pool. I mean, yeah. Bumper Pool is, you know, the all-time leading tackler at Arkansas. He, yeah. looks, he, he just looked a little bit overwhelmed physically out there for me, in, in my opinion. He looked like he still has a lot of learning to do in the NFL. He was reading things right, but he wasn't getting where he was supposed to be quick enough. And that may just be a physical limitation for him. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's cool. Let's just, so we'll, we'll write in our definites and then we'll put like the ones on the side that have kind of, uh, um, yeah, man, I got to keep, I do this every freaking episode now. It's three lights. (laughs) I gotta get, I gotta get used to not sweating, I guess. I guess because the Jersey too, if I were to wear a t-shirt, I'm usually fine. Um, all right, cool. Uh, nobody cares about that. (laughs) <laughs> um, let's do, uh, so quarterback, we got Bryce and Andy, and then running back, we got Miles, um, uh, Chuba, Blackshear, yeah. and these are my assumptions, uh, so, yeah. but these are my definite, so we got yep. Thielen, Mingo, Shark, um, TMJ when he comes back, and who I'm missing, there's only definites. So, yeah, because technically, I think a lot of people would say LaVisca as a definite, oh, but I'm going gonna, gonna to tell you to hold off on putting him okay. as a definite because I'm not entirely sure that that's going to be a definite yet. Okay, cool. And we just say tight end, Hurst and Thomas. I think the only one's definitely not getting cut. Yep. O-line, uh, we got our definite five uh, from last year, Zavala, uh, Irving, right? I wouldn't put him as a definite yet, okay. no. All right, just Zavala then? Savala, um, Justin McCray. A definite? Yeah, because he's a backup okay. center right now. So okay. I, I, I think you've got to have him on there. Okay. Let's do this. Cade Mays. I, yeah, I'm, I'm not putting Cade Mays. Yeah, yeah. Uh, D uh, line, we're looking at Brown. Mm hmm. Both Williams. Mm hmm. Tuttle. Tut. Oh. Well, wait, you said both Williams as in Raekwon Williams? Yeah, and Deshaun Williams. I don't think I would have Raekwon as a sure thing yet. Okay, all right. Because, I just... mean, he's still got some – there's still some areas, you know what I mean? Like, That's fine. Yeah, just for the sake of, like, let's go through the numbers. Let's keep him on that possible list. Okay, so we got um, linebacker. We have – you know, I'm, not, I'm writing on all four. You know the first four. Yeah, yep. yeah, we already know that. I'm not doing that again. And then we have uh, – then we have Bruiser Hill. Mm-hmm. Actually, we just – yeah, Bruiser yeah, Hill. Bruiser Hill. Make sure you put Bruger. some respect on that man's oh. name. Uh, Jones, um, Hayes, and that's probably it as far as definites. Seven definites in linebacker, probably, yeah. Okay, and then cornerback, I'll just say definite, definite four, and then, um, Tom, Tom Oliver. No, definitely not a definite. I'm not sure that he makes the team. Oh, it's just Hill then, Hill, yeah, Troy Hill, yeah. So those four and Hill, those, yep. That, that would be mine. Yep. Safeties, you know, the top three and Roe and Franklin. Franklin, yes. I wouldn't put Roe as a definite. Oh, wow. See, I, think- I, still think, I still think that, man, I think that if they feel confident enough about Sam Franklin's ability to play on the defensive side of the ball and not just a special teams ace, mm-hmm. I think that there's a real chance that they could say we can save a, a roster spot by letting Eric Rowe go. Okay. Let's go two, three, four, two.
six, seven. Uh, we only have three offensive line. Uh, seven, five, four. So it's nine, sixteen, uh, twenty nine, uh, twenty six, twenty eight, thirty two, thirty seven. Out of those, right? Okay. So thirty seven definites plus uh, long snap. And then you got. Her. Then you need to have right. That's what I was about to say. Long, long snap. Yeah. Yep. That says, says 40. So 40, 40. So 13 spaces left. Okay. So then that leaves Corral. All right. So I'm going to say Corral out. For the sake of what we're doing, let's cut okay. Corral. We're putting Brown in? I, I think so, yeah. I'm going I'm to keep Spencer Brown. Okay. And then are you putting um, Shai Smith in? Man. LaVisca? One of those two? I'm going to put LaVisca in. And then I, I'm I just also. I think they talked about it way too much. And Sheena yeah. Quick, Quick, Sheena Quick is even talking about it a lot. How they have yeah. this, like special packages and stuff for him. I'm gonna put Derek Wright in over Shai wow. Smith. Wow, Wright is definitely in though. For yeah, you. I'm gonna I'm gonna put him in right now. Okay. It, I All think right. for the sake of this exercise and, and doing this, let, let me get Derek Wright. Okay, cool. So then uh, Tremble's in for you. Tremble's in for me, and I I, I think I'm gonna cut Gio Ricci. Okay, and then uh, I'd say we cover. We have like eight or nine. Lineman, so we got Zavala McCray. Zavala McCray. And then I'm going to go. So here's the thing. I think that Jordan and Irving should be cut. Mm -hmm. I just think that it may be a move where, yeah, I'll, I'll say that both of those guys get cut eventually. It, it but I think what ends up happening is that I think the other teams that cut offensive linemen, I think we go and pick up one or two of those. Okay, so we would say two for, from other teams? Yeah. Okay. Do one from other teams. Okay. Let's do this. Keep Cam Irving. Okay. Cut Michael Jordan. Cool. And, and Mays. <sighs> nah, keep Cade Mays. Okay, Mays and Irving or just yeah, Mays? Yeah, Mays okay. and Irving, keep them. And, and nothing from the other team? Okay. And one and one from the other team still. Okay, I still think we pick up some of I think so. Okay. So, Maybe, oh, damn it, man. Am I over... We'll come, we'll come back. We'll come, yeah, we'll come back. Okay. I would say nine, but I would say okay. nine max, but we can say okay. ten. Uh, Brown, uh, uh, Deshaun, Tut, and are you going to say um, Raekwon or? Um, yeah, I'll go Raekwon. Yep, he's in. And um, what's the other guy's name? Does it hurt? Um, Taylor Stallworth. Stallworth? Or I'm not sure that he's going to be able to make the roster, man. I think it's going to yeah. be Raekwon. Okay. So then we got um, the, those. We have the seven uh, as far as. So we, we're probably going to keep two more outside. Let's just do tight, outside linebackers for first. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. go Iku and Amari. Okay, Iku. I like those. I think that's the right call. I think YGM is out, which sucks, but sorry, man. And maybe you try to trade him or something, man. I just, I'm not sure that he should be yeah, on the I roster. Think, I don't think he works. Um, and then we probably got uh, one more uh, linebacker. In middle linebacker. Man, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Chandler Wooten. Wooten. God, I don't really feel confident at all about that. But all right, uh, the quarterback we got our five. I think that's it. I think that's all we keep. I think that, yeah, shit, man. I I don't really like anybody enough to keep a six. But Stanley yeah. Thomas Oliver would be the only other option. Um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. What we have left. I, I yeah. think. I think okay. five's enough for that. Okay, let's go five right now and see where we get to. And there's four safeties, and maybe we get we keep a uh, bro. I uh, keep the four safeties for right now. Just do those those four. Okay, cool. So we had forty, and then we got uh, with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and we get an O tackle from the other team. We're at fifty-one, so then we have two okay. spots left where we Perfect. could get Rowe, uh, Thomas Oliver, or we get two places from somewhere else. So that's I would I would do I would do Rowe and Stanley Thomas Oliver. That's how I would fit, finish that fifty-three I, up. I think that if you have to, just because yep. you have to have your your you have to have the depth. Yep. Yeah, the defense back. I think that's yep. great. I mean, I think that's. I think the only thing that could be dif different would be alignment. We keep one less lineman and some and somebody else. We don't keep bright. We keep somebody else. Yep. Um, I I don't see much of a difference. I think that's that's it. I think that's yep. the that's the team. Uh, and I think that I think you're right. I think YGM, you're looking on the outside in. I think uh, Brandon Smith, you're look you're on the outside looking in. Sorry, yep. Matt Corral. Um, I think Richie maybe. Uh, it's, I don't, yeah, and, and it's, Ricci hasn't done anything not to make the team. And right. so that's why that's kind of tough. But I, I, when we just did this right now, and it was like, are we really 10 linemen? Like, that's a lot. That position group, though, 
is one that is so important and impactful yeah. that if we lose somebody, if Corbett comes back and he's not all the way healthy and we have to keep throwing in spot starters, we need depth there. You know what I mean? So I would feel more comfortable having 10 offensive linemen than four tight ends, just me personally. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No, I mean, when we just did that exercise, yeah. 10 is fine. I mean, right. yeah, it's fine. Uh, because, I mean, you can, you can cut anywhere. We can cut brown. We can cut right. Uh, right. There's there's guys there that don't have to make it. Yeah. Uh, but I liked it. Man, I like this team. I yeah, I like that roster too. Yeah, that's good. We're, we're that's a pretty good team. Well, wow, good good for us. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we need to talk any more about it. That's a. No, we, that's it, we, man. We built. We built. Button we built that shit up. Yeah, we built a roster. <laughs> this is this is nice. This is a nice yeah. little team. Um. Yeah. All right. Cool, man. Well. Yeah, I appreciate it. Anything? Uh, anything else? Um. Uh. Chark Academy. I'm messaging yep. all my friends today because. Uh, that's what I do for a living is just kind of yep. annoy people until they give me what I want. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to go and make everybody feel bad, not uh, contributing yet because that's they right. said they would. And they just kind of like, Oh yeah, and we are not, we are not at the 25 people, um, from my Twitter to raffle off a Jersey. So there's still time. I think we have four more days. Um, mm. there's still time to get in there and, and, you know, buy tickets and, and send me proof. Mm. Win yourself a Jersey, man. Stop messing around. It's $10. Win a damn NFL Jersey. Also, feel feel good about yourself and do it on your own, and don't right. make me come and make you feel guilty right. for not like supporting a wonderful. I'm not saying that I won't guilt trip you into I'm, it. Though. I'm going to. <laughs> yeah. so you're going to do it either way. Either I'm going to guilt you into it, or you're going to do it out of the kindness of your heart. So just yeah. go ahead and do it now, right? Yeah, get yourself a gold <laughs> sticker. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, just exactly. Do it for the good of it. Yeah, feel, feel like a good person. Don't feel like that you right. like got guilted into doing something. Yeah, people, am I right? Uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No, no, uh, you, but you are right, though. <laughs> all right, we gotta get out of here with my glasses yep. fog all the way up. Um, yep. note to self don't wear a jersey ever again on a show. Uh, go. yeah, uh, thanks everybody. Uh, like, subscribe, follow, tweet, I yep. guess. Uh, and one last it. thing that we have to make sure we do keep pounding. We gotta keep pounding, baby. Keep pounding. And here comes my song at the end. Ha, ha, ha.